Wes Morgan is a sports journalist. Like other sports journalists, Wes's tools to cover a story are a pad and pencil, a laptop computer, and an idea. But what separates Wes from other sports writers is his beat. Wes covers, what many consider, the most storied program in all of college football, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. The position is a dream come true for the Sturgis, Michigan native, who is in his first year with Blue and Gold Illustrated, a publication and website dedicated to covering Notre Dame athletics. Wes, why sports journalism and print in particular? Uh, I was terrible at math, so that was one. Now I always enjoyed writing. Um, felt like it was something that I could do and obviously the connection there is a love for sports so um, it wasn't something I had planned on doing to be honest with you I kind of made my way around a couple different colleges in the Midwest and finally decided uh, on communications actually and, uh, at Indiana Wesleyan University and got my first newspaper job in 2002 so now you're working for a specialty periodical. What's been the biggest opportunity and challenge for you making the transition from the daily to Blue and Gold Illustrated? Blue and Gold Illustrated is all Notre Dame all the time. So when you're at a newspaper, you're doing different things all year round. And um, Blue and Gold, we do a, a weekly magazine during the season, 60 pages. So that's a lot of space to fill. And then we also have a website, blueandgold.com. So um, we run about anywhere from 10 to 15 stories a day at blueandgold.com on top of the magazine. So uh, that's that's been the biggest change, actually, is just coming up with fresh storylines every day through a long football season and into basketball season. What's been the biggest learning experience for you as a journalist by making that transition to Blue Gold? Uh, digging deeper, I guess. When you're in the newspaper industry, uh, well, one, you're dealing with space issues. Um, so you can't always tell the full story. Um, but at Blue and Gold, with, with that amount of space, you really have the time um, to get into to deeper stories and, and, and finding angles that maybe others aren't paying attention to. You know, obviously, you covered the most storied program of all of college football. Has it sunk in that you get to do this on a daily basis? And what's been the feedback from fans? I'll tell you, I, my, my first season was uh, 2007, the three and nine debacle. And, uh, you know, growing up in this area, um, Notre Dame is, uh, is almost a mythical place, you know. So that season, it was kind of strange to me that they struggled so much. So that year, it didn't really sink in. Uh, the next couple of years, each time you come to the stadium, you, you get goosebumps. And every time you walk up that tunnel or down the tunnel, um, you realize how special a place it is. So yeah, it's starting to sink in after five seasons now. It, it's a, it is a long season and it's a lot of fun, but I think people do forget that it is a job and um, it is, uh, in some cases, a 60, 70 hour a week job during the football season. But when you get to go to all these games and uh, you get text messages and emails, phone calls from friends and family that can't believe you were at that game and it was just another day at work for you, Sometimes you have to stop, you have to pause and realize that this is a, it's a pretty amazing opportunity. A lot of changes going on in our industry, especially in print. You know, where do you see us kind of shaking out in the next couple of years, especially with social media? Boy, uh, it's tough. You know, I, a lot of bad news from, from some of my colleagues that are in the newspaper industry right now. Um, staff sizes are shrinking and, and the papers are shrinking. Uh, and all that. So obviously, newspapers took a while to realize that online was the way to go. Um, and I think eventually um, they'll they'll rebound once they figure out how to how to make some money online, whether it's paid subscriptions or, or continuing to, to advertise and whatnot. But I think in some form or another, the newspaper industry will survive. Um, but you can get your information from pretty much anyone now. Um, that means kind of sorting through what's legit and what's not, uh, but everybody has a voice and, and if you have an expertise, um, you can put it out there and, and people will consume it. So. Besides the paper and pencil, any other tools that you've incorporated into your job on a daily basis? Say the cell phone. Um, you can pretty much do everything with a the phone these days. Uh, you know, I mean, from, from video, from audio interviews, uh, pictures. Um, tweeting, I mean, you see a difference now just from three years ago 
in the reporters standing around with their phones tweeting and getting out a quick message and telling the story bit by bit throughout the day via Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that. Um, and even some of the older reporters who you never would have thought would figure out that technology have been forced to. Any advice for a, a young person wanting to get into this industry? What advice do you have for these individuals? Um, I would say with with so many people now, like I said, having a voice, um, make sure you have something to say um, and embrace technology. Um, and I and I think that uh, you know journalism schools right now, communication schools are are making sure they're reinforcing those ideas. I mean, you have to stay with the technology if you want to survive. So embrace it, don't be afraid of it, and um, have fun with it. For IrishMojo.com, I'm Lynn Clark.